Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, a TBM 900 goes down with Larry and Jane Glazer aboard. iFlight Planner announces its trade-up program and Bombardier issues a YouTube C-Series update. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Last Friday, a Cicada TBM 900 went down at sea off the coast of Jamaica after what appears to have been a loss of cabin pressure. This is the same TBM 900, November 900 Kilo November, that was shown during our Aero TV interviews with Dar Cicada at Lakeland in April 2014. All reports indicated that Larry and Jane Glazer were aboard. However, some reports indicate the possibility of another passenger. It's reported by numerous sources that the plane departed Rochester, New York last Friday morning. Its intended destination was Naples, Florida. Reports on what actually happened are varied, but it appears the problem started while cruising at flight level 280 when the pilot requested a lower altitude. ABC News broadcasted some recordings from air traffic control that indicate the pilot advised ATC of a problem with the airplane when requesting the lower altitude. However, we at ANN have not heard the complete recordings, nor do we have a transcript available. A NORAD spokesman said that the F-15 pilots, who were scrambled to escort the plane, reported that the windows of the airplane were, quote, frosted over, when it was observed at its flight level 250. As the aircraft approached Jamaica, it surmised that it ran out of fuel and descended into the sea. We'll post updates when available. iFlight Planner has announced its trade-up program, which is an initiative that allows pilots using any competitive flight planning products to trade in their existing subscription and have the time remaining added on to their new iFlight Planner Premium or Premium Plus membership. iFlight Planner continues to offer a 30-day free trial that's available via the App Store. However, pilots only have until September 15th to take advantage of the iFlight Planner Premium Plus and its special introductory price. Company officials confirm that the special price can be combined with the trade-up program if purchased before the mid-September deadline. iFlight Planner recently introduced iFlight Planner Premium Plus a new pricing tier that includes geo-referenced airport diagrams and approach plates. All of the products wirelessly sync via the iFlight Planner Cloud to ensure the pilots have access to everything they need to fly soundly. You're watching Airborne. We'll be right back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States. But you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-V out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Over the past two decades, no resource has compiled as much expert valued information about the sport plane world than the Sport Plane Resource Guide. Over 1,500 pages, hundreds of aircraft, dozens of how-tos and directories. All this and more will be coming to the sport aviation world soon with the new all-electronic and updatable Sport Plane Resource Guide for your iPad, iPhone, Kindle, tablet, PC, or other electronic devices. Get your order in now www.sportplane.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to support Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. Robert Duar, the Vice President and General Manager of the C-Series Bombardier Commercial Aircraft Division, and Graham Webb, the Pratt & Whitney Vice President of the PW-1000G program, met while the video camera was rolling in a clear effort to assure customers that the C-Series project is alive and well. Duar confirmed that the incident that occurred on May 29th of last year during a ground run-up of the engine damaged the left engine and left wing. He reported that no aircraft systems were damaged and that while some damage occurred to the carbon fiber structure, the full structural integrity of the wing was retained. Webb said engines have now been delivered to Bombardier for the continuation of the flight test program. According to Dewar, the incident did not involve the fan drive gear system or the low pressure turbine disc. 
A return to flight testing actually started yesterday. Other aircraft will begin the flight test program while final repairs are made to the incident aircraft. The first C-Series aircraft is still expected to enter service in the second half of 2015. Each week, we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. When you watch Patty Wagstaff perform her Oshkosh 2014 routine through a wingtip mounted video camera, you'll learn two things. One, these cameras will stick to the wing at high G loadings. And two, her throttle seems to be at full power at all times. Caution, only consume food prior to watching this at your own risk. Search Patty Wagstaff Oshkosh 2014 on YouTube. If your heart says P51, but your checkbook says no, maybe it's time to look at the V8-powered P85 sport plane. The P85 features a two-seat rugged composite airframe designed for aerobatic flight, as well as cross-country cruising, and is derived from Altitude Group's radial rocket airframe. The power plan is the Performance LS series of V8 engines. It appears this engine and airframe combination is designed to get your Walter Mitty juices flowing. P85 initial program focus is on a powerful yet relatively low cost firewall forward installation. The V8 engine features an engine ECU controlled electronic fuel injection system, single power lever engine operation, and it uses MOGAS. Altitude Group LLC has been manufacturing and marketing the Radial Rocket TD and Radial Rocket RG line of high-performance composite sport plane airframe kits since 2011. When we come back, Bell 407 is increasing its high and hot mission capabilities in North America. Stay tuned. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. The FAA has approved a new flight manual supplement for high and hot operations for the Bell 407. This supplement allows operators the ability to improve hover and ground effect and hover out of ground effect with increased payload in high and hot conditions. Since the flight manual changes were approved about two months ago, several operators have already begun seeing direct benefits from the additional payload. According to Bell, the 407 integrates reliability, speed, performance, and maneuverability with a cabin configurable for an array of missions and payloads. The FAA has certified Cessna's new Citation CJ3+, less than six months after the company introduced the new model in March. The Citation airplane is certified for single pilot operation featuring a number of new systems designed to reduce pilot workload. Building on the popular Citation CJ3, the CJ3 Plus features the Garmin G3000 integrated avionics suite, an automatically controlled cabin pressurization system, and an advanced fault and maintenance diagnostic system. The G3000 avionics suite in the Citation CJ3 Plus includes turbulence detecting weather radar, TCAS-2, Advanced Terrain Awareness Warning Systems, and ADS-B capabilities. The aircraft cabin also features a wireless media server, Garmin integrated cockpit and cabin iridium phone, and high-speed internet capabilities. Cessna CJ3 Plus has a range of up to 2,070 nautical miles. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. And you can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new episode. 
and be advised we are not kidding, there are some major upgrades and announcements coming soon to Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale, thanks for watching.